This is The Gaming Rep, and today we're going to be diving into the world of Subnautica, Below Zero. So in the last video I promised you a look at a, a more furnished base, um, so this is what I've done so far. As we go into the base you'll notice I've got a storage container as soon as we go in for batteries for all my equipment and so on. And the first room I've turned into a, a workroom really. Uh, we've got various different storage containers for food and drink, plants, components, resources um, and so on. Uh, one separate one for titanium, the fabricator, and a battery charger, which is a lifesaver. And of course, my jukebox. Um, now I have to say this track, uh, Diving Too Deep by Nerd Out, I've actually been listening to offline as well, so uh, it, it is quite catchy. Then this is what I've done to the sleeping chambers, the rest quarters. I've used the double bed and I put a poster above it to make it a bit homey. We've got a fridge to store fish and food in. Uh, to save it from perishing so anything hopefully in the fridge will stay alive or stay in one piece. We've got the coffee machine of course and an aquarium just to make it a bit more homely um, and on the wall I've put a map. I am going to try and improve the quality of the map for the next video. Now at the minute we're sort of there-ish where the finger's pointing um, northeast, north northeast of Delta Island. That's where the drop pod is in our base is. That's Delta Island. And today we're going to head across to Fire Robotics, which is to the west of us. Um, it's where a lot of the components, such as the fridge and so on, came from. Um, so turn the jukebox off. I'm going to change the batteries over as well on my Sea Glide. Um, it's about halfway down. I'm not sure about console controls. For the PC, press R. It will bring up the battery display. You can switch the batteries out. Then I'm going to pop it on to recharge while I'm away. Again, I like the fact that the batteries and so on are all rechargeable. Um, it makes life a lot easier than having to keep trying to build or make new batteries using copper and the uh, plants. And I would say it was one of the first things you need to build because you will be going through batteries like there is no tomorrow. Now we're heading off to Fire Robotics. I've dropped about 90 seconds of travel time. Um, simply because it's easier that way. I'm sure you don't want to watch me swimming through the sea all the time. So we land at the dock at Fire Robotics. Um, there's a number of containers, a number of rocks that we can get ore out of and so on. Um, the reason I'm collecting them for my next video I'm going to start building a base actually on the island because there's quite a lot to do here um, but obviously because it's cold well, you don't want to be dying of the from frostbite as we're wandering around so we're going to head up towards where the fire robotics base is and for that we want to be heading roughly westish still um, be warned it is very cold my suggestion would be not to do what I've done and just head straight up. Go back to the water, jump in and warm up first, then come back this way. Um, I literally just about make it to a cave on the way and get to warm up there. Um, which is, yeah, not the best. The one thing you'll find on this island which is useful, there are some peppers which um, you can eat and they will heat you up. They'll warm your body up a little bit. Um, yeah, just over in... Ah, oh, there's the cage straight ahead of me now. Right. So, we're going to run into here. Yeah, hypothermia is imminent. Thanks for the, uh, the, the advice. So, here's the pepper plant. It's a fever pepper, I think it's called. Yeah, fever pe fevered pepper. If you pick the fruit of that and eat them, they will warm you up. But even just being in the cave will heat you up. Um, as I say, as long as you're in shelter somewhere, whether it be um, a building, one of the caves, you will warm back up again. So we're going to carry on on our journey now. 
Now at the Fire Robotics Lab there's quite a few things to find that are of use. There's the cosmetics, such as the fridge and so on, which are nice, but they're not essential. But there's also um, the spy penglings, which are something that your sister in game was working on and developing um, for Altera. And they're robotic penglings that can go and wander around into smaller spaces for you. And we'll see something similar in a minute, which I'll show you. There's also the um, hover bike and its pads, launch pad here, which you need to scan. They will help you travel across land surfaces a lot better than just running. However, please note they do not work over water, so don't try it. Uh, so this is one of the places where the penglings can go and investigate, just through that hole there. And you'll find there are resources and things like that in there that you need to collect. Um, what I would say is just be cautious while you're using the pengling, because obviously you're going to be getting cold, you don't want to get frostbite and freeze. So I'm going to carry on up the stairs, and as we go to the right, you'll see some big steel doors just behind me now. That's the fire robotics lab, there we are. Be careful of the icicles at the top. They will fall down. They will land on you if you're not careful. Um, so as we come in to your right, straight away... Keep going around, Stephen. Come on. There we are. That's the launch pad for the Snowfox hover bike. Um, so you want to scan that. There are components dotted around as well within the buildings and outer, outer area. Um, I think you can get two of them from here. The other one you have to search around in the wilds and find. Now when we come in, I've already scanned this area, so I'm afraid I've taken most of the things. There's a map on the wall that you can scan that shows where the pengling hideouts are. There's also a pengling there that you could scan uh, to get the blueprints for the uh, spice pengling. Coming in here, you've got a nice fish tank, you have some PDAs, and of course the bed and a poster if you want to steal it. Now this is your sister's room, Sam's room. It does say to you when you first come in, something's not right. And I spent hours in here searching, trying to find a clue or something like that. And in truth, there's nothing. There's a PDA that you find on the desk but there's nothing here that I found that gives me any clues about what was going on. If you find something, please tell me, because I will feel like such an idiot. Uh, I've only been playing for a few hundred hours, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit embarrassing if I haven't found it. So we're done downstairs. We're going to go upstairs now and follow the path round. So as we come up again, you've got... Um, some supply crates you can raid for bits and pieces. I'm going to go back through here now because this is one of the alien devices. They're called the Architects um, and they're basically an alien race that came to the planet first and it's their technology um, and this will play a key role in the other part of the story. So I'm going to scan it now and we'll find out what it says about it. Original speculations surrounding these alien structures posited that the gates may have been religious artifacts or industrial machines. Further research has indicated that these gates are in fact medium range teleporters that allow for the instant movement of baryonic material across space and time. So basically there's a, a network of these and I'm assuming if we can power them up it will help us to jump across the map faster. Um, no, we'll find out what happens when we find it. One thing to note when you come in here, behind it and to the left there's a small supply of ore, uh, silver ore, which is very useful for making wiring kits and it saves you searching for the darn stuff. So we're going to head back uh, out in a minute. Just want to make sure I haven't missed anything else. No, that's everything. Okay. So as we head back out, we're going to go up onto the uh, damaged walkway. And 
we're going to follow it round the mesh. Because that will take us to the entrance for the uh, the second chamber, the second room in the base. Um, the upper area, which is more sort of office-y type space, I suppose, is the answer. And again, you can scan this building here. It will give you a blueprint for a large room. And it is quite a large space. And it's a room that you can subdivide into um, different rooms within it. So you build a large shell, but then you can build internal walls and doors to set up separate rooms. Say you want to have uh, separate sleeping quarters, shower and so on in your base. This will allow you to do it. Again, you've got the poster that you can steal. And as we go through, that's it, there's not a lot really. You're, you, you know, you're limited on the space that you can go and raid. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Um, thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm going to start doing a bit of exploring um, and see what I can find at slighter depths. I'm also going to try and find these components for the sea truck, which is the vehicle you can use for moving underwater. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.